If maintenance is one quarter of the solution to high reliability, what are the others? The first is good design control, the second is accurate manufacture slash assembly, and the third is good operating practices. But I cannot influence those factors. I can only affect the maintenance. Then you will never get higher reliability in your operation. All four factors must all be addressed together. The parts in your machines do not care about your organizational structure and how responsibilities are allocated to people. The parts can only respond to how they are designed, how they are fabricated and installed, how they are treated and maintained. I hear what you are saying, Professor. I will need to bring this perspective back to my company. Perhaps it is best that tomorrow I explain the basics of reliability and give you simple examples of how it is measured. You will then see the importance of the four critical factors, design control, manufacture, operation, maintenance, to equipment lifetime reliability. Thank you, Professor. I'll see you at 11 a.m. tomorrow. The slide tells us the reliability of a part, or of a whole machine, or system in service depends on the following. Robustness of the design to lack of manufacturing precision. Precision and accuracy in manufacture and assembly. Roughness of loading and operation. The quality, relevance and timing of maintenance. Reliability is the measure of how long a thing will last and still be able to provide the service it was originally brought to do. Once a thing cannot fulfill its original purpose it is said to have failed. When something is broken it clearly has failed. But a thing can have failed even though it is not yet broken. For example, a pump can still be working and pumping, but if it no longer delivers the pressure and or flow that it was installed to do, then it has failed. This is called a functional failure, because it does not provide the function, pressure and flow, it was installed to do. Hence, equipment reliability measures the likely length of equipment working life between failures. High reliability is valued in industry, because it means that parts and components go for longer before they fail. That means more production from plant and equipment for less maintenance cost. Reliability is customer satisfaction driven. Reliability is measured at end of life, probability of functioning to design for a period of time. Reliability is observable by number of returns and service callouts from customers. In manufactured products the reliability comes from its design, materials, manufacture and use in service. What is the reliability of this glass? In other words, what's the chance it will hold water next time you use it? Stay with me, because understanding how to measure reliability is one of the most important concepts that you need to know of to do maintenance well. The slide shows many ways for the glass to break, the failure mode, they are called failure mechanisms. If reliability is the chance that a thing will work properly, we can ask what will stop the glass from working properly. There are numerous reasons that a glass will break, the failure mechanisms, many of them are listed in the table on the slide. Each cause of failure can happen to a glass if the particular circumstances arise. This means the chance of the glass breaking depends on the frequency, or how often, that bad circumstances arise. But before the glass breaks it needs to be both put in danger, the opportunity, and enough force applied, the failure mechanism, to break it. Most often people say failure modes rather than mechanisms. How do you measure reliability of a glass? Since reliability is the chance that the glass will still be usable, we can measure reliability in reverse by working out the chance it will fail. Because we know the ways the glass can fail, its failure mechanisms, we can estimate its chance of failing in a period of time. With, being broken, being a failure mode. What is left over is the chance of not failing, which is its reliability. Some glasses survive for centuries, others less than a week. The glass is not such a good example to equate to equipment component reliability because all glasses, regardless of design, are about equally vulnerable, so the only things helping them to survive is how they are treated and the intensity of use. In other words, operator precision. Most other things can be designed to be more inherently reliable. The use of a glass as an example, though not a true reflection of what happens in operating equipment, because glasses are failed by accident, but will still help us to envisage the concepts of reliability. In other words, a poison event, and not by being worked under load conditions. As we go through the glass example, we need to remember that it is not really a part in a machine, and we cannot directly relate the failure behavior of a glass to the reliability of parts in operating equipment, measuring the number of failures. What can cause this glass to break? Pause for a moment and study the frequency of failure causes in the slide. 
you saw the failure causes in order of most frequent occurrences, to least. Listed, it can be dropped, knocked, crushed, temperature shocked, mistreated, and experience latent damage. From personal experience, we can plot our own history of glass breakage onto a graph. In the slide, you see the number of glasses broken in a household during a 30-year period listed by the failure mechanism that caused the breakages. You can see that of the 24 glasses broken over 30 years, dropping is the main reason for breaking glasses. Make sure you understand that the timescale of use is important. The best glasses that come out only for Christmas and weddings last longer because of the time in use, and so at risk time, is less. In such situations, there is less chance for things to go wrong because they are not put in circumstances where failure is possible. Measuring the rate of failures. Please pause and study the slide. What can we say about the lives of glasses in this household? With 24 glasses broken in 30 years, the average failure rate, or failure frequency, per year is 24 divided by 30, which equals 0.8 glasses a year. The mean time to failure, MTTF, for a glass is 1 divided by 0.8 per year, which equals 1.25 years. In other words, glasses last on average 1 and a quarter years before one is broken. Use mean time to failure, MTTF, to describe the failure of a single part, and mean time between failure MTBF to describe the failure of a machine, which is a collection of parts. Once we know the number of glasses broken over a period of time, we can work out a lot about the chance of glasses being broken in that household. It would be wrong to assume that what happened to glasses in one household is the same for every other household. Whether we could claim what happens in my house to glasses is the same as what happened in every house is too much to assume. To be sure how representative the treatment of glasses in my house was compared to the real world, you would need to do a random sampling of many other households. We also need to consider that the stock of glasses can be managed in two ways. 1. Do not replace any until the last one is broken and then get a new set, or 2. Replace a glass each time it is broken so we always have 24 glasses. One must distinguish between the estimate of the rate of failure from a sample of 24 that are run to failure, and the rate of failure in a stock maintained at 24 by replacing those broken, they are not the same, converting to chance of failure. We need to convert the rate of failure to the chance of failure. As shown in the slide, we have averaged the failure rate at 3.2 glasses for every 100, in other words, a glass is broken every 1.25 years. In doing so we have lost the real truth of the situation. Look at years 3 to 4, and 25, 26, 27, and 28, there were no breakages, but we have assumed a regular rate of failure of a glass every 1.25 years. We must be careful measuring chance, it is never certain. The best we can do is depict what is likely to happen, but there will always be a degree of uncertainty that it will happen. To calculate the probability, or likelihood, of a glass failing we need to know the total number of glasses in use. Probability of failure equals the number failing in time period, divided by the total number at risk. Because we are dealing with chance we can never be sure when a failure event will happen. We have developed an average measure for when failures of a glass occur, but it is not the same as predicting the real failure. A little later in the course, we will use the averaged rate of failure to predict how much time is left before a part fails. But it will only ever be an estimate, because our average is not what will actually happen. We should not be surprised to find that our predictions are wrong when chance is beyond our control. Or is it? At this point, you need to be aware that there is an important difference between glasses breaking and parts failing. For the sake of simplifying the explanation, our glass example has taken accidental breakages and modeled them as if the glass was in constant use, like a part in a machine. This is not strictly correct since the glass can only be broken by accident, but a part is broken by failure mechanisms present in its use, a random event, as well as human error, which is a poison event. Drawing the failure curve for a glass. This slide shows that the failure rate of the glass reflects robustness of the design, quality, precision and accuracy, in manufacturing, roughness and care during use, the quality of maintenance care. Once we know a glass chance of failure, we also know the chance it will be there when we go to use it. Drinking glasses are unusual in that they do not wear out. Most plant and equipment parts degrade with use. Because glasses do not break by themselves, they break from accidents, we can say that they only fail from human errors and acts of God, like an earthquake. They are broken only when the circumstances and a failure mechanism align by chance. So we say that the breakage of glasses is a chance event, but not a random event. A random event is one that happens from the continuous presence of numerous failure mechanisms that may, or may not, produce a failure. No maintenance for random failures. Like a drinking glass, 
Many electronic parts exhibit random failure and suddenly fail without warning. But we now know that the failure was is not the part's fault, we humans did it by overloading it. For parts where the first sign of failure is the breakage that destroys it, there is no point replacing the part until it breaks because there is nothing wrong with it until it is failed, by us. We have to carry spare parts for such parts because there is no degradation curve to monitor. In random failure situations there is no certainty when a failure will happen. You can go for years without anything going wrong, or you can get several failures in close proximity. Random failures are preventable. Both causes of random failure are controllable by us. We can prevent overloading and we can manage the local environment that a part sees. We saw that failures occur because of situational overload or material degradation leading to fatigue. Overload is caused by poor operating practices where people mistakenly impose too much stress on a part, or the part's designer selected the wrong material or misunderstood the part's service duty. Material degradation is a local environment cause, and that can be controlled. In the left-hand graph, overload is not a separate distribution but a tail of the stress distribution. This is why overload failures are less prevalent than fatigue. It is possible that different equipment operators have different stress distributions in different environments. This is why you never buy a car used previously for hire, like Avis, etc. You don't know how much overloading was done by previous users. From the failure history, you were able to get a mathematical model predicting the future. No not actually predicting the future. It's more like estimating the chance a thing will happen. How accurate is the model for use in maintenance strategy decision making? This was a very simple example. Life of parts can be estimated with some level of confidence, especially over long periods of time. Reliability engineering is not an exact science, rather it provides evidence for making more certain risk management decisions. It's very impressive, Professor. Can you give me more examples? Yes, tomorrow let's have a look at the failures of some other common parts we use often, but these will have different failure curves to those seen so far.